This lesson takes a look at some of the utilities that can be used to tell you things about the files and file systems. Now this certainly isn't all of them, but it's some of the most useful. The type of a file is not determined by its name. You can name a file anything you like. The name is only a convenience to help you keep the files straight. There is a utility named file that can be used to determine the actual file type. To show you how this works, I've gathered up some files of different types into a single directory. As you can see by the file suffixes, there are files of all different types. Now the file command can be used to identify them all by using the asterisk wildcard to select them this way. Whenever a file is composed of ASCII text, the file utility looks through it to try to figure out what kind of ASCII text it is. The first file listed here is an email message saved to disk. The file named output.ps is a postscript file and rewind.xbm was determined to be a C program. As you can see, it recognizes GIFs, JPEGs, and Linux executables. The last file in the list was copied from a Windows system and it was still recognized by the file command. The suffix on the file command has no effect. For example, the MV command can be used to rename a file so its suffix is wrong, like this. But that won't fool the file utility. How does it do that? Well, it's easy, really. It uses magic. It's all in the file called user share magic. This file contains the locations and the values of magic numbers that show up inside files and identify them for what they are. Let's take a look at what it takes to identify a Java class file. We can have more search ahead by entering a slash followed by a search string like this. Now you can see by this line right here that to recognize a Java class file there must be a long value at offset zero from the front of the file and the hexadecimal digits of that value spell cafe babe right here is the information that a JPEG file is recognized by the magic number fox fox dog 8 Many Linux programs use the file utility to verify that the data they're about to input is the right kind of file. You can invent file types of your own, and by adding their magic numbers to the magic number file, folks will be able to find out what kind of file they really are. DU, the disk usage utility, can be used to list the files and directory sizes and give you the amount of space used by each one and a total of the space used by all of them. For example, I can go to my home directory and list the size of everything that's there this way. As you can see, it lists the size of every file. It also lists the totals for each directory. At the end, it lists the total amount of space used by all files and directories. If you wish, you can skip all the intermediate values and just go to the total this way. Now the inverse of disk usage is disk free, which lists all the disks and tells you how much free space you have left on them. You may remember all the entries in the ETC file FS tab. Well, here they are. And as you can see under the use percentage column that some of the drives are dangerously full. I really need to do some system maintenance. There are two ways to do this. I could go in and delete all the unnecessary files, but that's a lot of work. I'll probably take the lazy way out and go down and buy a couple of new disk drives and spread things around some more. As you can see, by modern standards, these disk drives are kind of small. I guess my systems are starting to age a bit and it's time that I upgraded. The only system shown here that has much space left on it is the new one named Retro, which is the Windows system that I bought to record these classes. It has a 30 gigabyte drive and I've already used 42% of that. 